At its core, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is solid with some critical flaws. At its heart, I'm puzzled at its goals. Story-wise, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is well-written, especially Barrett. Square has been masterful in the art of character development. These characters are breathing in a gaming space where diversity is extremely lacking. Few gets a black man right, and Square here knocks it out of the park. Not to spoil anything, the main story is a definite treat. By the way, screw Chadley. Homie got five lines to test every interaction. When you talk to him, five lines, when you leave, five lines. It's just him and Elena that are the most annoying characters that I've encountered so far. Although the cast is fun, I do wonder what happened to Sid. Something feels off about that character. It might be the voice, because Sid, for me, never seemed like a country guy. Or it might just be his personality, as if he's been spirited away. I don't know who this man is. So please, play the game for yourself, and you tell me. The game features 14 chapters with multiple side activities. I clocked in over 120 hours mostly doing side missions and still haven't finished everything. I highly advise to have something else to play on the side because you can burn yourself out. The cause of burnout is not the campaign which give or take is about 40 hours. It's the side missions that range from enjoyable to downright boring with some in-betweens. Final Fantasy 16 also suffered from some same issues with side missions so I hope the trend won't continue. But now, this is reality, including a card game, two types of tower defenses, and a treasure map minigame, which, as a collective, is a small sample size to the abundant amount of minigames here. At what point does it become so much to now you're picking mushrooms and playing pull a bucket with a chicken? It's cute, but the process is completely unnecessary. Note the square. Less is much better in this case. For context, there is a subsequent side mission involving Proto Relics. More on that later. You can find it on a map, but this one mission you cannot enter upon arrival. Instead, you pick up a Katar statue, and it will light the way to a bigger Katar statue. Once you traverse the terrain to the designated area, then you can engage with a similar enemies. After engagement, you must return to the original place where the statue resided. The door will open, so it's okay to finally go in. Inside, there's a ladder. Go down and talk to a goblin. He will start the next process, which is a mini game to kill as many cactars in the time allotted. Repeat this process three more times in different zones. Sorry, but it's annoying with the same thing over and over again. This one though, you can't fully finish until much later in the story. Die now or die in boredom later. The choice is not yours to make. Sadly, Polar relics are gated by each region, meaning more and more tutorials and minigames. In the end, it will be worth the rate because a powerful boss awaits. Quick hint. A traveler through space mostly known for the poor. His larger than light personality sees him across multiple Final Fantasies. Even in the spin-off Final Fantasy, only a name, but he is a formidable foe to the jack of all trades. Moving on. Outside of mini games, other activities include activation in tow, think Assassin's Creed, it will display other points of interest on the map. They just forgot to move the fog caught into detail with it. Treasure hunts or excavation intel, the latter providing much more better rewards. Expedition intel, basically you scan the life stream, which is a massive stone. It provides intel related to the region. Scan them all to unlock the area balls for that region. Moogle Intel is a mini game to catch Moogles. Then there is Divine Intel, a pointless mini game that makes the summon for that area weaker. The reward is okay, but there is no need for a mini game for it. If you're concerned about a challenge, don't worry, you can still fight the summon at full power, like me. Fiend Intel is a combat arena with three sets of challenges to complete very basic challenges from staggering enemies to exploiting weak points. Seriously. It's simple, and the opponents are variants of pre-existing enemies. Good news, there is a lot to do. Bad news, the concepts and its execution is the same. Back to Chadley real quick. His services include using points you earn from completed activities, which I previously outlined. Your only option is materia, and the value of its use is completely dependent on your view of its value. Other than that, it is the combat simulator. Think Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, a list of challenges with multiple enemies 
and a set number of rounds. This is also where you would challenge summons to acquire them for battle. Gameplay-wise, combat is mostly the same. You could play using the same strategies from Chapter 1. However, utilizing the new mechanics aren't a bad option either. In Rebirth, there is more of an emphasis on combination attacks. Synergy abilities become available the more you use your weapon abilities. Partner with a companion to deliver devastating blows to your combatants. They do require investment before use though. So once that ATB charge fills up, go ham and be rewarded. The benefits of synergy abilities range from unlimited MP for a short duration to unlocking a higher limit level. New one can unlock the more you level both individually and as a party. Just complete events and stack up XP. Moreover, there are skills that don't require MP or ATB, so don't sleep on something free of charge. It's true these things aren't mandatory to finish the game, but it doesn't hurt to give it a try. Now I got a bone to pick. Why square did you have to implement the same ability on different weapons from the first game? To elaborate, Remake Part 1, Counter-Strike is found closer to the end of the game. Same situation here, just under a different weapon skin. The only new here is characters. Outside of that, it's the same thing. So with all the effort that Square put into these minigames, you couldn't find the time to give new abilities with these weapons? The old weapons could have been rewards from challenges or bought from the shop. I just found a priority list lacking. Unfortunate and a bit silly. The item transmuter is another mechanic I'm not fond of. It functions like an alchemist black mist store. Find materials around the world and from the main menu you can craft potions, armor, accessories, just not weapons or materia. It saves the trip from the store but still, I feel like it was developed to give the player something in the world so massive. After you craft the item, its requirements for additional crafts become smaller. I wish instead each item got added to the department store at a significant discount. That gave me a real reason to traverse the world and collect as much as possible. After a while, I just stopped caring. The UI, I feel as though, is worse. Just a little bit. I'm more of a fan of the UI from part one. It was so much better looking in my opinion. I miss it already. That thing was gorgeous. This one isn't as bad, just a little bit lacking in my opinion. Music though, when it comes to Final Fantasy, you will never hear a complaint from me. This is a treat as always. The soundtrack alone is a good reason to jump in. Love this game, but it reminds me of Kingdom Hearts 3. Way too many tutorials and mini games. This has gotten a bit out of control. I understand people love Final Fantasy 7 no matter what. However, to turn a blind eye to blatant issues is doing a service to no one. My note to Square, let's Kingdom Hearts in my Final Fantasy please. I haven't talked about all the mini games honestly because I'm tired, just done. It's too much. So if you can, please play something else while you're working through the game. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is pretty much basically an 8 out of 10 for me. And that's all for me. So please, make sure you guys take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Until then, take care. See y'all.